Well, good morning. <laughs> oh, let me get right into it. The title is a question. Am I being forced to explore? <laughs> I just had a long conversation with my friend Eilish Diavalon from Australia. She will be making a video with me tomorrow. And she will be my hostess on my upcoming trip to Australia. She is friends with a man from Unity of Melbourne in her country. This past Sunday, I became aware that the Unity of Melbourne here in Florida is a sister church with the one down under. Small world. <laughs> anyway, we talked about some of the activities in which we, we may participate including Native American or Native American Native Australian ceremonies and sweat lodges. I haven't done a sweat lodge in several years, though I used to do them regularly. Anyway, it will certainly be an interesting trip, one that will likely stretch me <laughs> into a newer version of Ron. By the way, I still need help with funding for the trip. Here's the PayPal link. Indeed, when I mentioned Unity of Melbourne, Australia, she said, I have a friend that goes to that church. And she said, when you're here, we will go together and we will visit and you'll get to meet my friend. He's a lot like you. <laughs> and uh, so it's, it's, it's such a small world. I mean, there were so many synchronicities, even in the conversation that we had of, of common interests and uh, she sees me and f feel has has long felt actually a, a connection spiritually with me. Uh, she mentioned that uh, that perhaps we were in Atlantis together and it's strange because when my daughter was about 15, I'm going to say 15 years old it was right in that general area. One day she said to me, Dad, she said, we're soulmates. We were in, uh, yeah, what did, I, what did I just say? <laughs> we were in Atlantis together. Now, I've not been one to remember much of past lives. Uh, I do realize that I've probably been a priest in many lifetimes or been involved in spiritual matters. I mean, it didn't just, uh, it isn't just a coincidence that I've been interested in spiritual things from the time that I was a little boy. Uh, and of course, as I've said before, my, my parents told me when I was 18 years old that they gave me to God before I was even born before I was conceived. When they were getting married, they dedicated their firstborn child, which was me, uh, to God. I was born, as I said, uh, nine months and four days after their marriage. They were married on uh, January uh, 17th, and I was born on October 21st, the same year, 1946. So in any case, I'm looking forward with a little bit of apprehension when she's talked about uh, Native Native Australian ceremonies. Uh, I don't know what they do in Native Australian ceremonies. I mean, we talked about it a little bit. And she said, you don't have to do anything that you don't feel comfortable doing. Uh, and she says, no one will force anything upon you. Uh, now, sweat lodges, of course, I've, I'm well familiar with that. As I told her, I said, there was a time for three years at least, that I did sweat lodges every month, sometimes two a month. Some of them had a, a Native, Amer Native American water pourer. Others were uh, the, the lady who was, uh, I guess she was sort of like the, the hostess of the, of the one sweat lodge that we did, and, and she was the water pourer in many of them. In any case, uh, I'm going to be participating in a lot of things, and she talked about driving, uh, uh, getting in her van and, and riding together all over Eastern Australia, I guess, is, is what I understood. Uh, I wasn't planning on going any further than Sydney, uh, 
because I didn't know that I was going to be riding with anybody for one thing. Uh, but she ha has us going on some, some trips together. And so there's going to be a lot of exploration and a lot of new territory for me to, uh, to explore. And the kindred spirit idea and the fact that, that she just happens to know somebody well, who is a lot like me, as she put it, uh, that lives in, uh, or the coast of unity of Melbourne, Australia. And I was just in unity of Melbourne Sunday and I'll probably go this coming Sunday. I was supposed to be visiting a friend, uh, but that was, that's been postponed for another week. So maybe I'll go back to unity this, uh, <laughs> this coming Sunday again and, and, uh, tell the minister there that, Hey, look, I, uh, uh, I happen to, uh, have a connection with my hostess, uh, that is also at, that uh, goes to unity of Melbourne and in Australia. So it, you know, small, small world. And I, if you can tell that I'm excited, you're right. And less than six hours now from now, I will be getting back up. Hopefully I will get some sleep in between and recording the video for the next, for the next, uh, version of, of what I do every day. And it will be a, about a 30 minute video. And we will talk about, uh, Alicia and I will talk about, uh, certain things. She will do most of the talking, but it will be a conversation between her and I, and, uh, you'll get a chance to, to sit in on that if you choose to. So I, I want to thank you. Those of you that have been praying for me, because I believe, uh, this whole trip, is an answer to prayer. Quite honestly, I don't think if I hadn't lost my home, I don't think I would be planning this trip. Uh, I don't think it would have happened at this time. Uh, I don't like to even think that there's anything good about losing my home, but if I'm going to try to derive something of, of benefit out of it, um, the, the trip to Australia might very well be that. And actually the trip to, to visit my friend uh, that I've never actually met face to face who has so kindly uh, helped me in so many ways, including financial, uh, especially when I was in the, when I was having all the medical issues uh, last year, uh, she was in a position where she had just come into a little bit of money because of a settlement from an accident. And uh, she sent me a, a fairly decent amount of money as my son and I assume my daughter knows about it too, but my son could certainly testify to that. Uh, she was uh, in communication at the time, very concerned about me, as were many people uh, praying for me and uh, wanting me to come, come through this thing strong. And recently, I mean, I've been, you know, feeling like I would almost rather die and I even mentioned that to her, but she says, we don't die. <laughs> she says, even if you want to, you can't <laughs> because you're part of that God spark that uh, is eternal. And there's no way that, that, uh, that you can die because uh, you're part of, you're part of the creation that is, and it's, and it's part of the divine thing. And she says, so is everybody else, even the ones that play dark roles. Um, I, I find that difficult, but, uh, uh, apparently she, she also said, I'm going to bring that up too. Uh, even though I see my time is running out, uh, she brought up that, uh, from her perspective, spiritually, uh, some of the darkest entities on the spiritual level have already been dealt with, uh, by God and they're not in the picture anymore. It's basically going to be just the humans that are that are left that are still trying to hang on that offer the resistance, but, uh, the resistance is going to be futile. Anyway, any case, uh, I'm looking forward to the conversation that I'm going to have in about a little less than six hours now or so. I mean, I may not start it right at six o'clock, 6 AM, but that's when I hope to get up and, um, send her the message that I'm ready. So I trust you'll, uh, tune in for, for that as well. And thank you for listening to this and namaste.